Hello, I'm Megan Baker. Influence Her by Baker Public Relations is all about celebrating and inspiring women in our local communities. On International Women's Day, we thank those leading ladies in the Capital Region and Pittsburgh who have shared their achievements with us since the launch of our video and podcast series. You too can do your part to help forge a gender equal world. Our next Influence Her guest has made quite an impact in sports and is further paving the way for equality for women athletes. We hope you enjoy this month's episode. I'm Megan Baker, this is Influence Her. Born and raised in Saratoga Springs where she started her golf career, Dottie Pepper joins us for this episode of Influence Her. Welcome. Thank you, Megan. It's a pleasure having you. You're a pro golfer, an author, and a broadcaster. I don't sleep much. <laughs> How do you do it all? Well, all right, then I ask you the same with five kids. So yeah, we, we just uh, we make good use of our time. What is fascinating, aside from all three and everything in between, um, you're the winner of two LPGA championships. Let's start with that experience. What was that like? Well, two major championships. Uh, it, it sets you apart. Um, it, it proves that you can do the best work in, in what are often the toughest tests. And I happened to win, win the first of the four majors, now five for the LPGA. Um, I did that twice, so early season wins. And uh, it, it's really, it still is the first major championship on any tour's calendar. So it, it was, um, for me, it, the first one came pretty early. Mm -hmm. um, I had come off a, a very good season in 91 where I had finished third on the money list but hadn't won a golf tournament. So I'd played at a very high level for the entire season. But it was, it was time to, to cross that barrier and get it done and get it done in a big way. And I happened to do it uh, in, in a playoff um, on network television. Uh, it was a pretty, pretty dramatic flair. And then to set uh, what then was an uh, all-time LPGA and PGA Tour scoring record to, to win it again in 99. Uh, I, I had really made a concerted effort in that offseason to be ready for that tournament. And when you can set that sort of goal and get it done, it's particularly, uh, I guess, rewarding. What did you learn from those experiences? I think it, you, you learn that you don't always have to have your best stuff to get it done. But you also learn that um, oftentimes the one with the biggest heart wins, the one that refuses to lose. And, and I think both situations were examples of that. Having that drive and determination, yeah. that fire within. Yes, exactly, and not to accept uh, mediocrity. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the hallmarks of what major championships are made of and, and what pe people that are successful in business and life in general are. At what age did you develop a passion for the sport? I loved it from the very beginning. I was seven, eight years old that, that summer. Mm -hmm when my grandmother got me five lessons from a local PGA professional. And by the time I had gotten to 12, 13 years old, I was really starting to be a pain in the neck to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> really wanting to take it to that. With four girls. Yes, right? <laughs> yes. I want to do this. I know I can do that. And wanting to move forward. And my dad being um, a professional athlete himself and at, at a very, very high level, he kind of reined his A-plus daughter back. <laughs> and knew that I would probably accept, expect too much of myself at an early age in, in, a, in a big competition sort of setting. And it was probably one of the better things that, that he ever did was that let's just take a step back and we're just gonna keep playing local tournaments for, for one more summer of junior golf and then uh, you can go on to the state level. What does a sport such as golf teach young women and girls? Well, I, I think there's a lot of discipline involved. I, I think it also makes makes you realize that uh, you're really living in a very imperfect world because there's no such thing as a perfect round of golf. Mm -hmm. So that those are those things. But there's, there's so much honesty built into the game. There is self-responsibility built into the game. There's nobody else to blame. It's just you, you and the golf course. So I, I think those are particularly great lessons for, for girls, for, for anybody, uh, to translate that they really do take them through their whole life. Do you think golf is starting to get as much recognition for women as there is currently and has been for men? I think it's growing. Um, it, will it ever be on equal terms? Probably not. Mm -hmm. It's a business model. Um, it, is, it is growing in huge ways. Over the last decade, the LPGA has made great strides, but I would focus more 
in our area about what's happened in Section 2, because when I came through that system 30-some years ago, I couldn't compete for a state title unless I played in the boys' championship. And finally, wow. we have a Section 2 championship for, for girls' golf, and this year a 13-year-old one. That's and remarkable. she's going to go great places. I, I just, I hope she shatters every record I set because she's really exceptional. And, um, and, and I think it was time. It was past time. But the way that everyone in this area rolled that championship out was, was really a proud moment. What has been your, your best experience thus far as far as your golf career is concerned? I would like to say it hasn't happened yet <laughs> because there's so many levels to what I've been able to do with golf, whether it was playing um, junior golf, amateur golf, college golf, into being a professional, into taking it on to broadcasting, and all the other things that golf has touched in, in, in that time. I, I hope it hasn't happened yet. So you sustain um, some injuries due mm -hmm. to golf. Um, what was that like, um, having to have to go through that and then it actually parlayed you to the next role? It was hard because we all think we're pretty bulletproof mm -hmm. and I'm the personality that if, if it's not right today you push harder tomorrow and oftentimes when you have an injury you can't do that. So that was a pretty difficult lesson to learn. I think the positive side of it was that when I did have my first major major surgery in 2002 uh, on my left shoulder I figured out that there was a lot more to life than just, just competing at golf. And in many ways, that probably set me up better for the balance of my life since then. So, um, you know, it's been nearly two decades now of mm -hmm. work in television, and that probably wouldn't have happened. It happened at the level and comfort that it had without having gone through those injuries. Was it an easy transition for you um, to go into that role as a uh, sports broadcaster and announcer? I don't know if easy is the <laughs> word. <laughs> uh, it seemed to come relatively naturally, I think, partly mm -hmm. because I had such good people to, to support me. Um, when you're t thinking about people of, that are in the golf hall, LPGA and World Golf Hall of Fame, and probably ought to be in the Broadcast Hall of Fame before it's all over, somebody like Judy Rankin or Mike Tirico that have been supportive of you and have kind of nurtured you along, given you things to work on, things that they said you did really well on, th and where you can get better. Uh, that part of having those, those contacts made it come easier. But is it easy? No, it's, it's constant work. And I continue to work at it. And, and I think that um, it keeps you inquisitive, it keeps you fresh, mm -hmm. it keeps you wanting to learn how to get better. So tell us, um, you must have met a lot of people along your way um, in golf and broadcasting. Who has been um, one big inspiration in your life? I think Judy Rankin, probably the biggest. Um, interesting as our, our paths crossed, Judy's first week doing televised golf was my first U.S. Open in 84 at, at Salem. And, and it wasn't until we be, really became friends, colleagues, that we realized that our paths crossed. and. Uh, really then became pretty parallel because of her, her as a broadcaster, myself as a player, and then they um, completely re-intersected when she was named Solheim Cup captain and, and was that in that position twice when I was on those teams. And uh, she's, she's done an awful lot for women in sports because of the standards she set, the way she was respected for covering men's golf and for women's golf, uh, the way she prepared, and really the way that she just embraced everybody she worked with. It was never a talent versus crew. It was always that was her family. For a lot of um, business owners, um, people in business in general, they use golf as a form of networking. Is that mm. still important today and why? It's enormously important. And it's gotten more important as women have continued to break through that glass or grass ceiling, so however true. you'd like to talk. It's an opportunity to be right with someone side by side in an outdoor environment, social environment, competitive environment, you learn an awful lot about somebody <laughs> you if you know. spend that amount of time in a difficult arena. Golf's not easy. No, it's, it, it can be frustrating. It, it, yes, it can. <laughs> I've seen clubs flying before. Yes, of course. <laughs> not that I did that. <laughs> but you, everybody always wants to at some point. But it, it really gives you that opportunity to be truly be with someone for that long a period of time. 
And today when we've got mobile devices and the world is on a, on a very yes. flat, fast course, having that uh, sort of time with, with someone or some people is pretty valuable and, and golf can do that. What has been your most difficult challenge thus far and why? I, I think I constantly battle being a perfectionist. And, and it's, it's something that, it can make you very difficult to be around at times, but it can also raise everybody up that's around you. Um, I believe there's a perfect telecast. And I hope I'm, I'm there that day and I say, we, we everybody nailed it, everybody was perfect. Uh, but I think it also keeps you moving forward, but it, sometimes you have to kind of back it off a little bit and understand that there are a lot of things always moving. Not everybody's always had a great day. You may have not had right. a great day, um, but to push in a positive way. Well, you are very humble, and we are our own worst critic. <laughs> we <something>. are. <laughs> we so certainly are. We're going to be tough on ourselves. So um, we are going to begin the next segment, which is called The Baker's Dozen. Yes. It's 13 rapid-fire questions where you will provide one or two word answers or more. Depending. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with question one. What is the first thing you grab in the morning? My coffee. What's in your Oh, you know what? I lied. Right it's my cell phone. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> On a nice day. Well, of course it is. <laughs> That's where mine is. What's in your refrigerator right now? Oh my gosh, uh, I'm making spaghetti squash casserole tonight. So Ooh. I roasted it last night and it's ready to rock and roll. I'm jealous. That sounds really good. It's one of my favorites too. Do you consider e gaming a sport? Yes or no? Not yet. Not yet. To be determined on your part. To be part. determined. <laughs> Saratoga race course or Saratoga polo fields? Race course. Other than golf, what sport do you really enjoy? Skiing. I skied long before I played golf. I love skiing too. Downhill, I, I assume. Family's in the business, so <laughs> <laughs> I had no other answer. Uh, one thing every golfer should have other than clubs. A great pair of golf shoes. Oh, I did not know that. Comfortable. Okay, now I have to make another purchase. <laughs> Farthest drive ever hit? Mine? Yes. Must have been cart path aided, so I would say somewhere in the 280 yard range. Wow. That's incredible. What is your nickname? Dottie. Dottie. I was born Dorothy. Both grandmothers are Dorothy's. Okay. No, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Favorite golf club? Club in my bag. My go to, um, six iron. Could you live now without a cell phone? I would like to, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> if you could trade lives with someone who would Michaela Schifrin. And this question came from our last guest, Andrea Como. She's an advocate and she's a survivor of ovarian cancer. She wants to know, do you prefer red or white wine? Always red. Always red. All right, now. Well, after five. After five. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the opportunity to ask the next question to our next guest. What is that? Wow. Um, what is the biggest part of maintaining a schedule? That's a very good question. Dottie Pepper, thank you so much for your time and your insight. You. We you. loved Thanks. getting to know you more. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for